Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We lift your name on high. 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 We lift you higher, higher. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Well, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We do serve a great God. We serve a great and awesome God. Thank you, Levites, for reminding us of how great our God is, for ushering us into that holy place, into the presence of the Lord our God. Listen, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Sunday morning here in the UK. It is good to be online with you for our Sunday morning worship experience. Look, listen, do me a favor. Hit that like button, hit the share button. Also sign up for notifications so you'll know when we are online. Once again, I need to say to those of you getting up early in the morning where well, you had an extra hour this time because we haven't moved our clocks forward yet, but next weekend, just coming Sunday, next Sunday, a week from the day, we move our clocks forward. But thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank each and every one of you for being here in the UK, in Europe, and in uh, Africa. And I'm sure some are watching us down over in uh, Japan and Korea. Good to have you sharing with us today. God bless each and every one of you, regardless of where you are right now. God bless each and every one one of you. Listen, get your Bible to 3 John chapter, uh, verse 2. 3 John verse 2. 3 John only has one chapter, but if you're using electronics, you have to hit chapter 1 to get to 2. But if you're not using electronics, you're using a print Bible like me, you just turn to 3 John 2. 3 John 2. As you're getting to 3 John 2, I want to say to those of you who are part of the family, we're having marriage empowerment today at uh, 5 p.m. local, marriage empowerment at 5 p.m. local. I, I need to say this also. I'm not, for time's sake, I'm not going to do much of a review, but uh, uh, get to 3 John 2. Today we're talking about the economy of the kingdom, and this is part number six. Economy of The economy of the kingdom, this is part number six. Welcome. I see you coming online with us. God bless each and every one of you. Economy of the kingdom, uh, this is number six. Here's what it says. John writes, Beloved, I pray. King James says, I wish. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and in all things and be in, in health just as your soul prospers. The, 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 the prosper here literally means to be, to be led along a good road or have a good journey. It is a verb compounded from two words. One means good, the other means way. So to prosper means that you have a good way. It describes prospering and succeeding both materially as well as spiritually. This verse is similar, though, to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. There, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Notice, we, 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 this is part of the review, and we've covered it the, in, in all six installments, I believe. But notice God says the law, the book of the law, or as a Hebrew would say, the Torah, uh, it is God's guidance and instruction. So God says to, Mo, to Joshua, you shall make your way prosperous and have good success to the degree that my guidance and instructions do not depart from your mouth. You shall have success to the degree that my guidance and instructions does not depart from your mouth. So look, God's will is to prosper his people. God's will is to prosper his people. His will is that you and I do increasingly, increasingly well according to the prosperity of our soul. God's desire is that our journey gets better and better along the way. You remember, Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it, watch now, more abundantly. So he says, not only did I come that you might have life, 
but I also want you to have an increasingly an abundance life that increases more and more. However, in John, here at 3 John 2, he, he dropped a qualifier, small qualifier in the process. He says, as your soul prospers, when, so that begs the question, when and how does your soul start to prosper? Your soul started the journey. Your soul started on the road to prosperity when you got saved. I believe I'm talking to saved folks today. You started prospering in your soul the day you got saved. You started on the journey toward prosperity of your soul the day you got saved. When you gave your life to Jesus, you came into a covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I often say, truth is a highway. Let me explain it for somebody who hadn't heard me say it. Truth is a highway. Uh, let me talk, let me start USA. Uh, in the USA, there's a road called, or interstate called I-40. In the UK, there's a motorway called the M-11. Let's start, with the, since we're in the UK, let's start here first. The motorway in, in, uh, of the M-11, the M-11 motorway starts in Cambridge. It ends up in North London, the motorway, M-11. Starts in Cambridge, ends up in North London. The uh, Interstate 40 starts on the East Coast, or you can say the West Coast, either one, and works its way across the state, across the states, across the country. It runs from East to West or from West to East, whichever way you're going. But there are right now on I-40, there are people driving on I-40, just like there are people driving on the M-11. The person who's driving in, in Little Rock, Arkansas, is not, the same per, is not in the same place as the person in Oklahoma City. Why? Because they're on the same road, but they're different mile markers. They are different mile markers. Like the person who just left North Cambridge is not at the same location as the person that's in North London. Why? Or South Cambridge, actually. It's South Cambridge. They, they're not the same location. Why? Be they're on the same road, but different location. Truth, then, is like I-40. Truth is like, metaphorically, M-11. You're on the journey, but there are different pe pe people at different junctions, but they're on the same journey. That's how it is with this thing called faith. That's how it is with this thing called salvation. We're on the journey but we're at different mile markers. We're at different junction spots. We're at different locations, but we're headed in the same destination. What some of you can't do is you can't pull over at a rest stop and stay there. You've got to get back on the road, on the road, walk, walk on the road to glory. You get back on this road to glory and continue to pursue. So then truth is an high, a highway. Everybody's not on the same location as it relates to truth. So is prosperity. Prosperity is a journey. Everybody who saved are on the journey, but you're not at the same location. So you can sing, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so, all you want to, but you could be stuck at one junction and not progressing in the things of God. You're not progressing in your prosperity. Why? Because for some reason, you could be at a lay-by or you could be at a rest stop. You could be at, at a number of places. You could have taken a detour and, 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 and miss the movement of the prosperity of your soul like you're not moving in truth and therefore you are not progressing and some folk on the highway or on the interstate are traveling at different rates of speed than other folk. I'm, t I'm teaching this Bible. I'm teaching. I'm, I'm working this illustration right here. I pray you're getting something out of this. So so let me, let me move though. I can't stay there. Two weeks ago, I took you to Exodus chapter 10 to show you that the enemy of your soul is not troubled by you coming to church, by you singing on praise team, by you getting up early morning prayer. Thank God for those of you who joined us all the week for our morning devotional, our time in his presence, or the, the, the enemy is not troubled even by you preaching the gospel. As long as you leave your wealth or your time, your talent, and your treasure in the world system. Remember, I showed you that Egypt represents the world. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, represents the enemy of your soul. Now, remember, why did God say to Moses, go get the children, my children, out of Egypt? He went to get them out of Egypt so that they may sacrifice to God at his appointed place. This could explain, though, why some of you are, are struggled or are struggled more after you got saved than you did before you got saved. Why? Because 
You left your time, your talent, and treasure under the world system and have not brought them under the umbrella of the kingdom economy or of the kingdom, the way God operates in his kingdom. See, 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 you believe Jesus died for your sin, but, but you also believe it's better for your time, your talent, and your treasure to be in the world system than to bring it into the kingdom economy. So what you got to say, salvation is progressive. Salvation is progressive. First Corinthians chapter 6, 17 says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So let me explain how salvation is progressive. When you got saved, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. When you got saved, your spirit got saved. Your soul is being saved and your body shall be saved. Turn to Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Salvation is progressive. Your spirit got saved as saved that it's going to be. But your soul is being saved. Your soul is being saved. It's being transformed. It's being saved. I'm going to talk. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you there. For, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, that's 1671 if you have a Bible like mine. So your spirit got saved, your soul is being saved, and your body shall be saved. You, 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 I, I, I don't have time to pull that out. I, uh, Lighthouse, you, you heard me do that. You heard me do it. As you're getting to Colossians chapter 1, 13, to the church at Rome, Paul wrote uh, in Romans 12, he says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what what." is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To the church in Ephesus, Paul wrote, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. To the church at Corinth, Paul wrote, for who has known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So, so what, what, what happens in this salvific experience is your spirit got saved. Your soul is being saved. It's a process. Your body shall be saved. Let me say this real, real, real quickly for the person who hadn't heard me say it. Your body going to want stuff up until the time you go home to meet the Lord. Your body's going to want things contrary to the will of God up until the time you go home to be with the Lord. But your soul, you, 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 are, you are having your soul. Your soul is being transformed. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion. I didn't mean to get this deep into it. Your soul is your mind, will, will, will and emotion. This is why Paul says renewing your mind. This is why Paul says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is why Paul says have the mind of Christ. Now let's read Colossians chapter 1, 13. I'm going super fast because I got a lot to cover. Here's what it says in Colossians 1, 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. This right here, this verse is a snapshot of what happened at salvation. For my military folk, watch this illustration. For my military folk, you can compare this to a PCS. What happens at your next duty station? Here's what happened. Here's what should happen or what used to happen. Pastor Newton and I can say what used to happen. Here's what used to happen. When you get to your new assignment, your new location, when you're transferred to your new location, you must end process. You must go to newcomer's orientation. You get a new home. Your kids go to a new school, and you have to learn the new area. As the longer you're there, you learn. And if it's international, you have to learn how to drive in that new location and get qualified to drive in that location. Now, for my, let me let me pull the non-military folk in here. Imagine non-military folk you, and the military folk. You move to Tokyo, Japan. In Tokyo, Japan, you've got to get a new home a new job, you have to learn a new language, you have to learn new customs, you have to learn new culture. More importantly, here's the, here's the connection to this message. You have to learn a new economy. Yen, as I understand it, is probably, it, it is way more expensive, definitely way more expensive than dollars or pounds. H however, when you go to exchange your currency to yen, you can, you, you can argue all you want with the exchange agent but their rates are already set. You can argue all you want with the changing, with the exchange agent. I, I, I don't care who you are or where you're from. Just like that exchange agent, God is not a respecter of persons, but of kingdom principle. That's why I went with all of that. So, so we've got to, you have to then learn how to operate in this new economy. This is why we're talking about the kingdom economy. Ephesians chapter one, verse three says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Second Peter chapter one, verse three says this. He says, as his divine power has given to us 
all things that pertain to life and godliness through 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 the knowledge of him who has who called us by glory and virtue so all the all the things he's given us he's given us through knowledge so i have to learn how to get the things that he's given us already when he died on the cross he gave us stuff when he ascended to, when he ascended to heaven he gave us things he blessed us but we have to learn how to access the spiritual blessings we have to learn how to access the, the, the wealth, if you will, the wealthy place or the prosperity of God. Let me say it a different way. Now that we've been translated or talking to my military folk, we have PCS from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. We must learn how to transfer or access the spiritual blessings or the all things that pertains to life and godliness. Let's do a quick review. Let's do a quick review. Go, go, go back to... Uh, to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. We covered this earlier. Go in your Old Testament to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. I'm sorry for, for my, my electronic folk. Let me see if I can put all of this together. Let me see if, see if I can put all this together. Getting saved does not mean that God meets all of your needs. Getting saved does not mean God will meet all your needs. Getting saved means I'm starting my journey. I'm starting my journey toward truth. I'm starting on the highway of truth, if you will, using my metaphor, I'm starting my journey of prosperity. Let, let, let me just, just, just say this and, and uh, uh, you know, just love me through it. You, your heathen co-worker, your unsaved neighbor could be doing better than you simply because you do not understand what it means to be in covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and how to access or transfer your spiritual blessings in the kingdom economy. My assignment is to be a good currency exchanger and teach you how to access, how to transfer your spiritual blessings, how to transfer all things that pertain to life and godliness. Before we get to Genesis 12, let me quote Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Here's what it says. Therefore, know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful one who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. How long did he say he's going to keep covenant and mercy? He's going to keep covenant. He keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations. Think about this. A generation is 40 years. That means a thousand generations is 40,000 years. Most people believe that Abraham lived roughly 6,000 years ago. So if we're just looking at this math mathematically, that leaves over 30,000 years for God to keep covenant and mercy. Now, listen, hold up. Pump, pump your brakes. Pump your brakes. I'm not saying Jesus will not return in those, those, those 30,000 years. I'm not saying that. Pump your brakes. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying, mathematically speaking, if a generation is 40 years, and a thousand generation is 40,000 years, and Abraham lived roughly 6,000 years ago, that means there's still 34,000 years left for God to keep covenant and mercy. Think about that. Just think about it. I said something really, really rich right there. You, you may have missed it. You may have missed it. Uh, uh, I, 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 I think I'm probably have to wait to, clean, to, to, to take that a little step further uh, Wednesday. So come back Wednesday. Uh, Genesis chapter 12. You, we've been here before, so let's do it real quick. Now, the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your people, from your father's house, to the land I will show you, right? I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Two words, and two, two key words out of this for today are blessed and cursed. Blessed and cursed are polar opposites. I believe you, you, I believe you know what it means to be blessed. I believe you know that already. However, let me say, blessed is connected to sanctification or being set apart. The NET, the New English Translation, de de uh, defines curse as to banish or remove the blessing. So according to the New English Translation, if you're cursed, but you have banished or removed the blessing. Strong says curse means to extricate, execrate, 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 execrate is what Strong says it means. 
Execrate is the opposite of sanctify or set apart. Therefore, cursed is the opposite of sanctification. That means when something is not sanctified or set apart, it is cursed. In other words, it's lumped together with everything else and everyone else. As such, it, it, it is easily disregarded or not responded to because it's another face in the crowd. It is lumped in with everything else. It is a part of everything else. It is indistinguishable. So, so it's just lumped in. Why do I need to respect it? Why do I need to regard it? Why do I need to respond to it? Oh, you, you're this close. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. So, so extricate, that's, that's the word. You, you, you bring, when, when, you, when you are cursed, you extricate yourself. When you curse someone, not, not Kirk Franklin curse, but when you, <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, when, 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 you, when you curse, I'm not talking cuss, curse. Curse is to extricate. It is to banish or remove the blessing. Creation, get this, creation was meant to respond to Adam and therefore and thereby you and me. Creation, by God's original intent, creation was meant to respond to us, not vice versa. We were not meant to respond to creation. Creation was meant to respond to us. Adam had total control of his environment. This is why he could name the Adams. He was the animals, I'm sorry. He was in total control of his environment. Creation responded to Adam. See, Daniel in the lion's den was a picture of how we are not supposed to be afraid of animals. The animals are supposed to respond to us. They're part of creation. They were original in God's original intent. They were meant to respond to us. The ground was meant to respond to us. Matter of fact, matter of fact, we don't find out about summer and winter until we get to know them. So, so there's a, there, there are some who would say that when if Adam planted something in the ground, that he would expect it to come up real soon. He didn't expect a seed time harvest. We get seed time harvest in Noah, not Adam. We, Adam, Adam, the ground responded to Adam. This is why the second Adam, Jesus Christ, could come to a fig tree and curse it and expect it to die right away. Why? Because creation was meant to respond to Adam. Creation was meant to respond to you and I. Oh man, that's real good, right? Very good. But 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 now, I'm about to show you what Adam did in the gar in the Garden of Eden is analogous to what people do when they fail to tithe. What Adam did in the Garden of Eden, and I can sense now, but looking at my clock, I'm gonna have to pick this up uh, uh, Wednesday. But what I'm, I'm gonna start it though. Let me get, let me see. Let me put in as much work, work as I can. Keep learning easy, and we'll get there. I'm about to show you though that what Adam did in the Garden of Eden is analogous to what people do when they fail to tie. Peep this. Peep this. Peep this. You ate your way into the problem, so you have to eat your way out of it. You ate your way into the problem, so you have to eat your way out. Let's look at Genesis chapter two, verse sixteen. Here's what it says. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. Right? Notice, God said you may eat of every tree of the garden, indicating that there were more than two trees in the garden. Who, who, who only puts two trees somewhere and called out a garden? God, God, is, God is, is so creative. Why would he just put two trees and call that a garden? That would be just two trees. Choose from one of these two trees. Although the two trees in the garden that he does talk about by name is something special about each of those trees. But look at verse 17. Verse 17, he says, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in that day, you shall eat of it. Uh, in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. I'm, 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 I need to chill. Slow down just a little bit. In verse 17, God said, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's mine. Don't touch it. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. That's like that hot stove you've been telling that baby that's moving around in that walker. That's Adam is the baby in the walker, and you started telling that baby, stove is hot. Stove is hot. That's mine. Leave it alone. But Adam, like that kid in that walker, is, is, had, didn't learn his lesson. Adam didn't learn his lesson. I pray you are learning something out of this. God said to Adam, he said, if you touch that tree, the day you touch that tree, you shall surely die. As you know, he was not talking about a natural death, but a spiritual death. Now go to Genesis chapter 3, 14. Genesis chapter, just a page over, Genesis chapter 3, 14. So God says, you can eat of this tree, but not this one. That tree is mine. That tree is yours. That's basically what he's saying. This is why I'm saying 
that, that what Adam did in the Garden of Eden is analogous to what people do when they fail to tithe. He said, that right there is mine. That's yours. Don't mess with this. You can have all you want of all these other ones. All these other ones. Just leave this one alone. That one is set apart for me. That, that, that's really what he's saying. That one's set apart for me. That, 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 you don't see it, do you? That's why God, that, that one is devoted to God. You can have all the other ones, but leave mine alone. Leave mine alone. So Adam failed. Adam disobeyed. He listened to his wife. Fast forward. I'm going forward. I'm, 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 I'm going kind of quickly through this. Adam failed. He listened to his wife. His wife listened to the serpent. Serpent. Adam listened to his wife. Adam, see, it didn't happen when Eve ate from the tree. The curse didn't happen when Eve. It happened when Adam ate from the tree because God started the conversation with Adam. That's a whole lesson by itself. Keep in mind the definition of curse. The definition of curse is to banish or remove the blessing, which results in to disregard or not respond to. So when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he disregarded, he banished or removed the blessing of God from his life. Genesis chapter 3, 14. Uh, so let's pick it up after Adam has eaten from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It says, so the Lord, the Lord's upset now. He says, so the Lord says to, to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat the dust. You shall eat the dust. Man, I've done this before. I'm, I'm not going to mess with it right now. There's something in there. Pastor New, you know what I'm talking about, first lady. All the days of your life, Pastor Sapto, y'all know who you know what I'm talking about. And then verse 15, it says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. That capital S seed there is Jesus Christ. He shall bruise your head. You shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will multiply your sorrow in your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. In other words, ladies, before Adam failed, childbirth didn't require an epidermal. It, it didn't require any pain. It, it, it was quick. It was quick. It was quick. She, she didn't have pain. You didn't have pain. So you just said, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. He says, your desire should be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. This is why submission comes to the New Testament, because, because of the fall. Now there, there is a, if you will, chain of command, so, so to speak. But I, not, not, not for the day, not for the day. I got to keep going. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I uh, commanded you, saying you shall not eat. Pay attention right here. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face or the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to the dust or ground you shall return. I hope somebody hear me. I hope somebody hear me right here. Verse 17, I, I stopped to emphasize it. Many times, many of us, me, I'm not talking about me, I'm not talking about you, because some of you great theologians, let me say this about me, about me. I was under the impression that God cursed Adam, but God didn't curse Adam. Read the text. It says, curse is the ground for your sake. Matter of fact, if you look in, I, 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 as I was preparing for this and looking up the word curse, some people in that verse put in the, def, in the definition of curse, they talked about how, how God cursed Adam. But according to what I'm reading, he says, cursed is the ground. He didn't say cursed are you. He says cursed is the ground. Cursed in, is the ground. See, he did not curse Adam. He cursed the ground. Now, in case, in case you, you missed what I said two minutes ago, creation was meant to respond to Adam and thereby to you and me, not vice versa. Sweat and toil was not God's original intent. Adam's original assignment was to guard and keep. That was his only job, guard and keep. Guard and keep. Be fruitful, multiply, guard and keep. Be fruitful, multiply, guard and keep. It was, that was a process, a cycle. Guard and keep. Be fru fruitful and multiply. All he had to do was leave that one tree alone. Long as he left that one tree alone, guard and keep the rest. Guard and keep the rest. Be fruitful, multiply, su subdue, subjugate. Guard and keep the rest. Leave that one tree alone. Leave that one that God has consecrated to himself Leave that tree alone. Tell somebody, leave that tree alone. Leave that tree alone. Since Adam touched 
what was consecrated to God, the Lord cursed the ground, which means he banished or removed the blessing. It missed now. We can disregard creation now, can disregard Adam or not respond to Adam like it was meant to. Since Adam touched that rope, touched the tree, ate from the tree, God says, hold up a minute, partner. Hold up. Creation now is not going to respond to you like it, it meant to be. You can't just speak the stuff and it do, does what it needs to do. You got there, there, there. You, you changed my system. You changed my order. You banished or removed the blessing that was on it. You extricate, execrated it, right? The, 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 now, this happens for two reasons. According to verse 17, according to verse 17, here, it happened for two reasons. First of all, Adam listened to a voice of another. Now, where does faith come? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Adam listened to the wrong voice. And he, secondly, Adam touched or ate what belongs to the Lord. I said to you, you ate your way into this and you certainly can eat your way out. You got to eat the word. You got to eat the word, hear the word. Now, God says to Adam, curse is the ground. The word ground there is Adam, Adama, Adam, Adama, Adama. It's, it's, it's root word is Adam. Where did Adam come from? The ground. Where did he say Adam was going to return to? The ground. Cursed is the ground. Cursed is the ground. So this is why the ground that we're made of now come under so, so many problems and challenges because it's been cursed. The ground's been cursed. But I, I'm not trying to tell you you've been cursed. I'm saying God says cursed is the ground. Cursed is the ground. Fast forward. Fast forward. Let me get out of this. Fast forward to Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. We covered this last Sunday. Remember, uh, Hebrews 11.4 says, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Adam had to tell his sons how to get the cursed ground to respond to them. Adam had to tell his sons. This is why I moved away from that, that ground piece a minute ago. Adam had to teach his sons how to get the ground that is now cursed, how to get it to work for them. Adam had to tell Cain and Abel how to make the blessing work again in their lives. Do, do, do you remember me saying that the cur that curse, the word curse is to disregard or not respond to? Adam, or not Adam, Abel. Abel obeyed God. God responded to his offering. Cain did not obey God. God did not regard or respond to Cain's offering. Abel discerned how to keep the curse off his stuff. Abel knew, all this over there in mind, don't mess with that. This one right here, this that's God's, this is mine. That's how I keep, I keep, I put the curse over there. The curse goes over there, but the blessing stays here if I learn how to respond the right way. In, in the mind of the servant, though, in the mind of the serpent, Abel had to die. Why, 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 why? Here's why, here's why, here's why. If Abel lived, he and his descendants would have established a system to redeem the cursed ground. Abel would have continued to follow the voice, the instruction that his father apparently taught him, and he would continue to redeem the curse. He would redeem the curse. But this is why Satan had to get Cain to get upset and kill Abel, because had Abel reproduced and continued to teach his children how to redeem the cursed ground, it is by a tithe or first fruit, you redeem the cursed ground. Had Abel live and taught his children, you, you have a whole bloodline that's knowing how to redeem the cursed ground. Maybe, just maybe, your ground is not responding to you because you have not properly obeyed God. You know, your ground is saying, well, if you're not obeying God, you've invited this to be cursed, and therefore I don't need to respond to you because you have execrated, you have invited a curse that's already supposedly to be removed, but you have invited back. And therefore, some of you got so many bills, you may as well go ahead and formulate them. Stop calling them bills and start calling them wheels. <laughs> yeah, you should call them Williams or something else. I, I, okay, I, I, again, I thought I was going to get to Malachi, but but I'm cracking jokes, you know. Let me get up out of here. I'll pick Malachi up Wednesday, but we, gotta, we will start with this curse and, and pick Malachi up Wednesday. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. William, hey, William, go, 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 go look at it. Hey, William, <laughs> that's when you really formalize Bill. William is the formal name of Bill. Go, go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm just clowning right now, but I'm going to get out of here. You know, laugh, laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Laugh is good for your soul. It's good for your soul, and you can learn a little more, and you can come back and, 
and get the rest of this the rest of this 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 little this uh little nugget that I'm about to drop. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Now, while you're getting there, re remember Revelation 3, 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup or dine with him and he with me. So God's saying, I'm, I'm standing at the door and knocking. I sent Bishop through here this morning to drop some knowledge on you, to, 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 to teach you that I'm really standing at the door, knocking at the door of your heart. But you've got to choose to open the door. You have to choose to open the door. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. This is our last turn, and we're up out of here. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19. Here's what God said in Deuteronomy 30, 19. He says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. He said, I, I, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, I'll come in and sup with you. You ate your way in, you got to eat your way out. Deuteronomy 30 and 18, he said, I'm calling heaven and earth to the witness stand. They're going to testify against you that I have set before you today life, death, blessing, cursing. Are you going to choose life and blessing or death and cursing, both for you and your descendants? I need to tell somebody watching this. Prosperity is possible for you, but you've got to make the choice. I need to tell somebody else. Wealth is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. I need to tell somebody else. Abundance is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. I need to tell another person. Blessing in the city is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. Blessed in the field is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. Blessed when you come out is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. Blessing when you go in is possible for you, but you have to make the choice. Life to the fullest is possible to you, but you have to make the choice. Obtaining all things that pertain to life and godliness is available to you, but you have to make the choice. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places is available for you, but you've got to make the choice to choose to access, to transfer what's in the spirit realm into your realm, but you've got to get to the place where you're removing the curse from your life. And we'll talk about it. I know, I know, I know. I hear you. I hear you. I thought Jesus bore the curse on the cross. He did. But come back Wednesday. I'm going to show you why it can still be working on your life. Well, I'm certainly out of time, but not out of thought. I try to stay close to that 30-minute mark just to keep you engaged with me. I know they get to going long as I used to go on uh, in the house. And, and, and good news, we, we're, we're headed back toward a live service. We're headed back to the, praise the Lord. We're headed back to a live service. Your care group leader has the details. Uh, get link up with your care group, group leader and you get the details. I'll, I'll talk more formally about it next Sunday. But for now, if you want to know the, the plan, just talk to your care group leader. They have it. So I got to get out of here before I go. Um, let me, let me make two announcements. First of all, re reiterate marriage empowerment today at 5 PM. Number two, first lady, is excited about Woe Saturday, Women of Excellence Saturday at 10 a.m. So women, get ready for uh, another session of the Women of Excellence uh, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock with the First Lady, all by way of Zoom. Before I go, though, you know, as our custom, we put links down for you to contact us, for you to connect with us, for you to give us your prayer requests, and fourthly, for you to so into this ministry. I'm telling you, it's good ground. And we're praying to keep the, that, that, there, that no ground is cursed in this ministry. Praying that no ground is cursed in your life. And like the, the seeds in Matthew 13, you are good soil. This is good soil. And I pr pray that God will return a 100-fold uh, uh, blessing to your life because you remove the curse. You put away that which belongs to God. And now because you put away, I'm going to show you this over the coming weeks. A couple of illustrations I have in mind to show you of how God is going to bless you as you be obedient to bringing out that which he says is dedicated to him. And he's going to bless you for it even more. Now, listen, listen, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do this. Get in trouble with some of you, but help some others. 
You know, some of you, as I said last week, some of you have not missed a job, a payment, or none of that, a check, or none of that. You haven't missed none of that because you're in a system that guarantee you that you're going to get paid. You've been getting paid. You haven't missed anything. So why not? Be generous. Generous. Those of you, some of you qualify for a stimulus check. Why not be generous? Bless the kingdom. Give the, put a little bit, sow a little bit into the kingdom, especially since really for you it's extra because you haven't missed a paycheck or none of that. You've been working an entire year that this whole COVID outbreak has happened. So why not be generous with that and bless the kingdom? This is good soil that you can sow into. Well, I'm out of time, not out of thought. Look, look forward to seeing you this evening, this afternoon for evening for our marriage empowerment. See you tomorrow for our noontime nugget. And then, uh, of course, Wednesday we'll do noontime nugget and Bible study. But I want to reiterate again, ladies, set, sanctify your calendars for next Saturday morning. First lady's going to do woman of excellence. We call it woman. Listen, by chance you're still here and you haven't given your life to the Lord. None of this stuff really matters because it won't work in your life until you make the first step. That's giving your heart to Jesus. If you want to know more about that, inbox us and I'll have somebody reach out to you. If not me, myself, but somebody will reach out to you this coming week. Within the next 48 hours, somebody's going to reach out to you. If you simply say, I want to know more, just, just tell us in the inbox, I want to know more about being saved, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody else, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, let us know. You, you, you want, just, just let us know, inbox us, let us know. Hey, I want to know more about the Lord Jesus Christ. Just, just let us know. Or if you want to, just right here in the comments. You don't have to look for you right while while you're still thinking about it. Just just say, contact me. Just you can just put it right there. It, that way, nobody knows what why we contact me. You just put contact me right here in these comments, and we'll contact you in the next. Well, if you put it right here today, we're gonna contact you in the next 24 hours. If you put contact me in the next 24 hours, we'll we'll, we'll inbox you, and then we'll we'll make sure that we'll contact you in the next 24 hours. I promise you. All right. God bless you as our prayer. Go be and do. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his uh, face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Now the grace of God, the love of Jesus, sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest and rule in our hearts and minds now and forever. Amen. I see you at five o'clock today. The rest of you, I see you at noontime nugget tomorrow. God bless you as our prayer. Enjoy the rest of your day.